Greetings, folks, and uh, welcome to today's show. Uh, you're no doubt aware that we have an election coming up on August the 9th, and uh, I hope you're going to get out and vote. Uh, this is a very, very hot season for uh, elections, uh, and uh, more so in the national scene than locally, but uh, it's important that you get out there. Uh, today we want to talk about the uh, two candidates for, for the 16th uh, District Senate seat in the Tennessee legislature. Uh, those are uh, the incumbent, uh, Senator Janice Bowling, and the Democratic challenger, Mike Winton. We have a little bit of a unique situation this morning. Uh, Senator Bowling is all tangled up in meetings in Washington. Uh, she wasn't able to be here in person, but we're trying to include her in the show uh, by phone. So you'll be hearing her voice, uh, hopefully, and uh, so we're ready to go. Okay. Uh, remind you that the 16th district is comprised of uh, seven counties, Grundy, Warren, Coffee, Franklin, Sequatchie, Marion, and Van Buren. Uh, so. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, Mike, let's begin with you, or we'll, we'll switch to, to Senator Bowling. Let's begin with you. How come you should be the one uh, to vote to be voted for? Uh, I could not tell if you were asking uh, Mr. Winton or me, Tom. Are you, did you switch to me? <clears throat> that, that's to you, yes. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much, and good morning to both of you, and good morning to the audience. Um, it, it's quite simple, and in leading a campaign, I always rely on the prayer, support, and actions of an army of grassroots helpers. Good government is certainly not a spectator sport, and friends who share my values also work to share their abilities to help me make their voice in state government. Uh, and working together in a campaign creates relationships that also give me direct insight into the needs and visions of each county, which I have gained over these last four years and actually over serving people in that county in various capacities for more years than that. So building relationships based on trust, integrity, and shared values, and shared concerns, and the shared love of God, family, and country creates the network of service. Okay. And as I meet with the groups, large and small, I have the opportunity to listen and learn from all of them. And so I would say if you value life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, our God-given, constitutionally protected rights, and the state <laughs> government, that respects your personal responsibility and accountability, I would sincerely invite you to join the bowling team. I'm Janice Bowling, asking for your prayers, your support, and your vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mike, why are you? Well, Tom, uh, as a native son of, of Middle Tennessee, uh, actually grew up in the heart of the 16th district. Uh, there are people that have addressed me with concerns, uh, and interest of, of needs uh, that they feel aren't getting fulfilled. Uh, when I started my campaign, uh, I didn't want to have a platform that was about Mike Winton. So I started surveying people and asking, what are your concerns? What are the needs of the people of the 16th District? And that has become our platform. And we found that listening to people, uh, even as much as we try, We've still fallen short, and I want to be that voice uh, in Nashville that uh, continues to work day after day after day, uh, not only looking for the needs of the people, but also looking for resolutions for those needs. Okay. All right. With that, folks, uh, let's take a short commercial break, and we'll come back and go some more. All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles, Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Hi, I'm Mike Winton, and I'm running for State Senate for the 16th District of Tennessee. Raised by a single mother who worked multiple jobs to raise our family, 
I understand the value of hard work and the obstacles met by many members of this district. Because of this, I'm committed to ensuring that you have access to education and health care. Whether I'm on a mission trip or running my business, I always remember it's about our witness and not about me. Be sure to vote for me, Mike Winton, so that our district can win with Winton. This ad paid for by the candidate. I see a train coming. It's rolling up the track. And it looks like that train's loaded with a real good Democrat. Mike's headed up to Nashville. That's where we need him to be. And if we all vote for Winton, We'll finally have a state senator who really represents you and me. Be sure to vote for me, Mike Winton, so that our district can win with Winton. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with the two uh, candidates for the 16th District Senate seat in Tennessee. Uh, they are the incumbent, Senator Janice Bowling, and uh, Democrat challenger Mike Winton. Mike is here with us, and uh, Janice is with us over the uh, telephone. Uh, she's bound up in meetings in uh, Nashville. So uh, let's begin, and uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, there was an article in the paper the other day about a uh, <laughs> A Republican member of the legislature uh, who is in Colorado studying uh, marijuana uh, for medical use and he was particularly talking about folks who've moved from Tennessee there uh, for that very because it is available in Colorado so uh, I just wanted to ask you what it what your take is on uh, uh, marijuana for medical use uh, Senator Bowling uh, thank you, Tom. That has been sub a subject that's been here on the Hill since I got here, and we have passed the legislation that does allow uh, pilot studies to see how that is used, particularly the oil uh, and those that are low in the THC that uh, will not be an, an issue recreationally. It would take um, a train carload of whatever it would be, the oil or, or that, to actually create um, the dangerous part of marijuana. But marijuana, as it is grown now, is over 300 times more potent than it was, say, 20 or 30 years ago. It is a very dangerous controlled substance by the federal government. So I think the federal government um, is still speaking loud and clear on this issue because it is a controlled substance, and uh, whether or not it will be used for medical just as it exists on the street now, I doubt that will happen at all if they can extract oil and can find uses for those oils that are not dangerous to the general public or accessible in any way, recreational use. Um, those are things that are being studied right now in Tennessee. Yes. One thing I would say is that it's um, in Colorado, of course, they're in violation of federal law, I guess, if, if you say they're using it not only for medical purposes, but it's being so for recreational purposes. Recreation, and right. I think that there is tremendous evidence that it actually damages the brain and the neurological um, stability of a person. And the younger they start using it, the more dangerous it is in their lives. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mike? Uh, not being, having a background in the medical field, Tom, uh, uh, you know, I don't know all the dangers maybe or all the benefits of mar marijuana. Uh, I do know that I have a grandson that suffers from seizures and I have a brother that actually is going through treatment for cancer. Uh, my grandson has never found uh, from help with any medication uh, that has been able to help him control. And he's been on such medicines as phenobarbital, even at a very young age. Uh, I believe- from seizures. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, I believe that uh, his doctors has, has let my daughter know that they feel like mar medical marijuana could contribute to some relief from those seizures. Uh, we were, were blessed that we got the cannabis oil uh, passed through legislature and some of that's been used a little but it's still not effective uh, as it is. Uh, I've also met with some farmers about the same thing and they feel like that it could be as long as it's overseen by government as long as it's controlled 
that it could also become a cash crop for some of our farmers uh, that may not have the you know advantages of some of the larger farms now. Senator Bowling seems to be particularly concerned about uh, control of the growth, that some of it is uh, dangerous uh, since it's uh, not not supervised. So Yeah, it'd have to be supervised and, and I, would, I would never under any circumstance uh, even support or co-sponsor uh, recreational marijuana. So Ah, okay. But, uh, and, and I will say that hemp, we have passed legislation that uh, hemp, which of course you can derive the oil there, and uh, that is being studied in Tennessee. We passed legislation that would allow very controlled growth of that. As a matter of fact, the federal government controls the seeds. Uh, we tried to do this a couple of years ago, and the federal government would not even release the hemp seeds. So now we're looking at um, uh, several universities in the state of Tennessee wanted to look into the, um, the benefits that could be derived, and we uh, passed legislation that would allow them to um, control in a controlled way have this hemp grown. And one of the benefits of growing hemp is that if there's any marijuana growing nearby, it does ruin the crop. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on, folks. Uh, uh, there also was a recent article about the fact that the governor appointed a task force, a very large uh, task force, to look into the uh, uh, question of uh, rural Tennessee. So a lot of the counties in, in uh, rural Tennessee falling behind in development. And uh, the task force was to look at that and see what could be done about it. They have come back with a number of recommendations, and they are going to require funding. So to do anything with this, the state is uh, going to have to come up with some money. And that there, of course, is always the rub. Uh, but they wanted to, to uh, uh, provide money for health care training, uh, incentive pay for teachers, and uh, and economic development and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, generally speaking, uh, you may not have had a chance to look at this in detail, but generally speaking, what is your what is your take on uh, this? And uh, can we come up with the money to do the job, uh, Senator Bowling? Uh, Tom, absolutely, we can come up with money. We have a state budget of thirty-eight point nine billion dollars right now. And, uh, 10.8 billion of that goes to provide health care for people who can't afford health care themselves. So one third of our budget, where most states are not even providing 20, 23 percent of their budget, Tennessee provides over 33 percent of our budget for health care. Then we have um, 10.4 billion that goes to education, and then we uh, have another 5 billion that goes to social services. But in the heart of Tennessee, where agriculture is still the number one product in the state of Tennessee, we have our rural counties who are losing representation in Nashville because of the last census. Most 60% of the representation in Nashville now comes from urban areas who don't have a clue what it is for us, uh, for those of us who live in rural areas. They just don't even understand some of our uh, challenges and some of our opportunities. So I was very pleased when uh, the governor named this task force and when Randy Boyd came and talked with me about it and I spoke with Amy New, who is the uh, Economic and Community Development Rural um, Commissioner. And Amy, many of you might remember our dear, dear friend Tommy Burks and Charlotte Burks. I had the opportunity and the blessing to serve with Charlotte. And Amy is their granddaughter. So um, it, it's really a wonderful person. If there's nobody that cares about rural Tennessee any more than Charlotte Burks and Tommy Burks did. So I know I told Amy, I said, I know it's in your DNA to do the right thing for rural Tennessee. We've got to make certain that there's equity in the deliverance of services to those of us who reside in 80 of the counties of Tennessee. Uh, so we're, we're about... Um, 60%, at least, more than 60% of the counties, but we're only 40% of the representation. Okay, and yeah, I... We are, we're working on that, and the issues that they have brought forward, one of the number one issues is fiber, high-speed broadband, to all of rural Tennessee, and that was such an important issue that it's a stand-alone, and that was an issue that I had brought forward as 
uh, the electricity of the 21st century, we've got to get that available in rural Tennessee. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're due for a, a short commercial break, folks, and we'll come back and uh, let uh, Mr. Winton uh, address that question. Trucks, trucks, and more trucks. Keith Barnett here with the Russell Barnett Automotive family, and we have your next truck. From the Ford F-Series, the Ram, Chevrolet, or the GMC, then look no further than the Russell Barnett family. With over 350 new and pre-owned trucks to choose from, now is the time to buy. Stop by one of our five locations, that's Russell Barnett Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Chevrolet GMC, Ford of Winchester, and Russell Barnett Ford in Kia of Tullahoma, and, or visit us on the web at russellbarnett.com. Why buy anywhere else? It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. It's your trademark. That's something special everyone knows and remembers. It's your thing. It's made holidays special for decades and summers unforgettable for the entire neighborhood. It's made everyone laugh every single time. Don't let illness or injury keep you from doing your thing. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. Just before the break, folks, uh, we had raised the question of the uh, task force that has uh, come up with several recommendations about providing assistance to the uh, rural counties in Tennessee that are falling behind. And uh, so the question was, and Senator Bowling addressed that before the break, let's give Mr. Whitten a shot. Mike? Tom, you know, as, as much as uh, it seems to always have been a tradition of our state, and, and I guess most states, uh, urban Tennessee has, has always been uh, kind of a trickle-down effect to, to rural America or rural Tennessee. Uh, I know growing up in Grundy County, uh, you know, it was easier for the cities of Tullahoma and Manchester and Coffee County and, and surrounding counties to have good educators when uh, sometimes our schools lacked in that. Uh, you know, if we look at the budget today, we, we have uh, millions and millions of dollars in a rainy day fund uh, that has been placed there and we, you know, we had an opportunity in health care alone uh, to pass Insure Tennessee, which would have funded uh, not only the health care for the expansion of people that could not, and working class people, could not get insurance and needed insurance coverage. Uh, through that, we've lost several hospitals within the state. And it's, and it's terrible that we lose health care, but it's also terrible we lost all the revenue. Uh, so most of those were in rural counties. And if we look back today, if, if we need to start uh, fundamentally being sound with that, our education system, if, if you know, the way to get out of poverty is through education. And we have unman uh, unfunded mandates, we have unfunded BEP, uh, fully funded BEP, and our educators are being villainized and forced into doing things that they don't need to be doing. They need to be educating our children. A big, and, uh, big issue here was incentive pay to get teachers to serve yes, in the rural and, counties. You know, I meet with, with educators just in nearby Marion County that are driving into the state of Georgia because it's a 9,000 annual raise. Ah. Just, just for driving 30 miles. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if we're going to stay productive in our rural counties, we're going to have to step up and take care of those issues. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, let's pick another hot button issue, and that is uh, gun control. And Tom, to yes. do that, let me just add though that this past year, 
uh, we raise the money that's going to education in Tennessee, uh, one of the highest. We're spending more than most states, and it was raised to $5.2 million for K-12, a billion, excuse me, $5.2 billion K-12 and $5.2 billion uh, for higher education, and over $200 million of that went directly to pay raises for teachers. Okay. It was indicated that it went for teachers, but in some situations, the teachers never got that raise. The Board of Education used that money in different areas. So it didn't it's always... It's earmark for teachers, and the LEAs, of course, can determine if they're going to raise their teachers' salaries or not, but the money was supposed to be used for teachers' salaries. Yeah, but that wasn't the case, so... Okay. Uh, well, as I say, let's... Uh, move on to one of our favorite hot button issues and that's gun control and the perennial question is uh, trying to uh, increase the use of uh, background checks and uh, and particularly trying to screen out folks with uh, mental issues so uh, what is your take on that uh, let's start with you this time Mike okay Tom, you know, uh, I, I believe and support our Second Amendment rights in the Constitution. Uh, it's an important right that we have and we deserve. Uh, with a background in working with law enforcement over the years, uh, you have to realize that we need stop gaps in place. We need to be able to use a background check system so that we know who have the weapons in their hands. Uh, you know, I own several weapons myself, and there's not ever been a necessity for me to be able to get that weapon that day. Uh, I've never been scheduled to go on a hunting trip or, or plan a hunting season that I didn't have plenty of time to prepare for that. So we need to make sure that we have those waiting periods that we can be sure. Uh, I remember one night uh, waiting for the background check. Yes, sir. To, to yes, sir. Okay. And uh, to be able to purchase those weapons through uh, licensed facilities and know where it's going and who hands it's going into. Uh, there's no more eerie feeling than to be at a home at 12 o'clock at night and a weapon be discharged from a person that had no business having a weapon in their hands. And if we look at our school campuses today, if we look at different venues, if you walk into a campus environment and you see three people and they're all armed and one of those is a perpetrator, enforcement has no way of discerning who is the right person. Which is which? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Senator Bowling? Uh, I definitely have been a long-time supporter of our Second Amendment rights. I think um, there are those, those written jingles that have been produced in Grundy County calling me the pistol pack and mama. And, um, and that is important because our founding fathers did understand that our First Amendment, a freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, freedom to redress the government and all, in many ways was dependent on the Second Amendment. When you look at countries that have trampled on people's right to bear arms, uh, tyranny is the author of those uh, laws that take away people's rights to bear arms. Our founding fathers gave us protection. They assume they uh, declared that that was a God-given right to defend yourself and to bear arms and to protect your liberties. They had just come out from under tyranny. Uh, and I'm very pleased that I got an A rating from the NRA and the endorsement of the NRA, and, and I think Mr. Uh, Winton got an F uh, with the NRA. So I, I don't, and also I just sponsored legislation because I think in Tennessee we have the, um, the, um, carry permits and the carry permits do have a lot of, of regulations associated with them but there's one um, loop that was not closed in my opinion in the state of Tennessee and I carried legislation this past session that did close that if there is a court order of protection uh, against a person then that person the local jurisdiction that issued that court order of protection has to send that information to the national database 
uh, so that if that person who has that order of protection um, on them, if they attempt to buy or purchase a weapon, that, tr- no pun intended, triggers that system. And, and it sends up a flag, and as the, as the uh, law stood previous to my legislation, then that information was sent back to the TBI. My legislation simply closed the loop. It said the TBI had 24 hours to get the information that the person who had a court order of protection in a particular jurisdiction, they got that information to that jurisdiction because that's where somebody's life could potentially be in danger. A danger if if that person had escalated in their anger toward that person or whatever and was trying to purchase a gun, knowing that it was against the law for them to do so while still under that court order of protection. Okay. Um, that's who needed to know. So there's there are reasonable laws that protect uh, innocent people and that protect all of our right to bear arms. And meanwhile, uh, Senator Bowling, I'm sorry to cut you off, but uh, we have just flat run out of time. Uh, we're going to have oh. to take an, <laughs> we're going to have to take another break and wrap up. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We're back, folks, and we've got to close up. Uh, we've been talking today with uh, incumbent Senator Janice Bowling for the 16th District Senate seat in the state legislature, and Mike Winton. And I'm going to give each of them about uh, 30 seconds to say something. <laughs> Mike? Uh, Tom, just to answer the F grading, I don't know what the criteria is for NRA, but I know at, at dinner the other night at our NRA friends, uh, that help raise money for our local youth and clay busters. You know, I'm always there supporting that, and I just wanted the public to know that. Okay. Uh, all right, Senator Bowling. Um, Tom, thank you again. I just would say that if folks are pro-family, pro-life, pro-religion, and pro-Second um, Amendment rights in particular, where I have been endorsed by the NRA, um, then if, if your values are for life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, I just ask you to let me be your voice in Nashville, and I promise that I will continue to work as hard for each one of my counties as I have, and I'm honored to be called your senator. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank both of you for taking time to join us, and thank you folks for inviting us into your parlor, and we'll see you next time.